identified and experimented on by the U.S. military. And what I'm talking about here are the bullseye ring-shaped plasma rings that form off of high-power radio transmission, radio waves. And this is done at experiments up at HARP, confirmed by the Air Force Research Laboratories, showing the ring formation, explaining how it forms, why it forms, and that it's not just at HARP, it's any high frequency pulse that's targeted. Now, high frequency pulses occur from NEXRAD radar stations in pulse mode. Normally, radar operates in the microwave bands, so in the gigahertz, but it pulses in the megahertz bandwidth, which overlays and coincides with the same megahertz bandwidths that they've used at HARP and other high frequency facilities to generate these plasma rings. And this is visible. This is actually happening up in the upper ionosphere. And they describe it as an upside down top hat shape that reaches down from the ionosphere into the upper atmosphere or lower ionosphere. And that's what we see here. Compare here of the harp rings from radar stations to the harp rings from harp. And these are smaller, of course, and they're less powerful. That's why we're not seeing actual visible plasma form off of this down here to the south at the radar stations. But the effect produces an actual wind rotation above the transmitter. There's actual excitement that happens. Particle exchange, electron cascade, storm formation. And we've documented this over and over again. For instance, Dover, Delaware on the East Coast, large radar pulse comes out of the Air Force base there. And several hours later, severe storms kick up. And the only spot to get an actual tornado warning is directly over the transmitter at the base. Just one of hundreds of examples. The US military has created multiple plasma spheres in the atmosphere, observed those using radar. People said it was impossible to see this stuff on radar and that the rings we were seeing were birds and bugs. That's what they said they were. You can go read the skeptic forums, huge forum, talking about how Dutch Sense has just seen birds and bugs, that these are birds and bugs. Now we know it's not. The experiments were done to prove that rotation, wind rotation, forms above a transmitter. So this is already proved by MIT scientists that you can literally generate a vortex above a transmitter and their idea is to generate tornadoes to produce power. <laughs> okay, so we can go down the list here on all the different documentation of high power transmissions, lasers stripping ions in the atmosphere to produce cloud condensation nuclei. That may sound complex, let me just describe it like this. A high power transmission strips particles in the air that then collect water molecules and form into clouds and precipitation, as described by Michio Kaku in this video here. I'm going to put a link down below to this post so you guys can come over and check it out. Also, they came out further and described it that they can do it with two beams, that one beam can strip the CCN, form plasma, and the other beam can pump it up and sustain it. So they generate plasma with one, hit it with the other beam, sustain it. That's what the US military has done at length. That's how they sustain the plasma ball in the atmosphere. They announced that back in 2013. But now we have it, guys. Again, look at the diagram that's included with this. And look at the date that this all occurred on. They're doing this experiment here. And I've got the PDF here provided by the DTIC.mil. OK, November of 2011. Now, was there a guy online that was going through a huge catastrophe and persecution over researching harp rings up at harp and at radar stations? In November of 2011, there sure was. And now they call it harp ring. Now, the way this all happens, there's an energy exchange where the beams interact. You can imagine also this can happen up in the ionosphere with just one transmitter, either dueling transmitter. This is Lieutenant Thomas Bearden's diagram here provided on scalar. But the scalar is just nothing more than an area where the energy exchange occurs. Like at CERN, they're doing experiments on the scalar Higgs boson. And we're talking about an area just like at CERN where they're using microwaves and klystrons. You'd have to look up CERN and understand what I'm talking about here. But that they use banks of klystrons. Klystrons are basically what powers the next rad radars here in the States. Banks of them, though, put together to power that beam at CERN. The beam at CERN is nothing more than microwave. You can look it up. So 
when we're talking about the scalar exchange, this is something that is was controversial science, but now it's proved. The plasma that forms at a distance from the transmitter is not subject to the square inverse law, that it doesn't dissipate at a distance, that an excitement occurs at a, at a distance when certain harmonics are reached. As described in this paper, they talk about the harmonics, they talk about the level, uh, the megahertz bandwidth that they're using here to generate it. But I can already tell you, other megahertz bandwidths have been used, not just the single megahertz, going up into the teens, uh, even up into microwave bands, it's been done. And again, the experiments have already I mean, been done. When we this talk about HARP, my there's other facilities. The Europeans, I've reported on this, are building five new HARP type facilities that are 10 times bigger. 100,000 antenna elements at one facility alone, and we're talking about five over the course of multiple countries. All five facilities, as you can see on the screen here now, the diagram, they're all designed to be targeted at a certain point, just like what we're talking about here, and to superheat and it is possible that plasma. So if it's possible with a high-frequency pulse from HARP, then we're just talking about power thresholds here. Then the debate comes in, how much power does it take to produce that plasma, that ionization? Is it 750,000 watts like we, what we see at the next rad stations? Everybody said it was impossible. Now we know it's possible. Now it's just a matter of doing those experiments with the radars next to find out the full deal on how far this goes down the list, how many other systems are producing their own rotation above the transmitter. If microwaves can induce rotation above the transmitter as proved in the laboratory, and we have microwave transmitters all the way across the country, high power, radar systems, microwave, that that could be a problem. Now that we know it induces rotation, now that we know high-powered systems can also form plasma, plasma superheated regions in the upper atmosphere, of course, heat and cold mix, rotation forms, add in CCN and actual moisture to that, we've got storm formation. Unintentional just from a radar system that would be used to observe the weather in conjunction with multiple other high-powered systems all the way across the country now? Does it have a cumulative effect? Of course it must have a cumulative effect. So the debate is...